So the question we asked at the end of the last video was, uh, how can we manage globalization in such a way that we get the benefits that come from globalization while avoiding or mitigating the dangers of crises? And in this uh, section, what I'm going to talk about is, is how that's been done through the last uh, several decades that we would define as, as the age of, of U.S. hegemony. So, so first, the, what was called the Bretton Woods system, um, which, which endured from 1946 to 1971. Um, the way that crisis was mitigated in that system was essentially because globalization was limited, and in particular, financial globalization was limited, right? Um, exchange rates were fixed, and, and so uh, uh, some of the problems that come from exchange rate fluctuations simply didn't exist. Um, and monetary flows were limited, so you didn't have big amounts of money uh, sloshing back and forth around the economy. When there were crises, uh, they were dealt with with a combination of things. One is the IMF would, would loan money or lend money to countries that were having problems in the short term while also requiring them to change their policies in such a way uh, that resolved the problem. So one of the important things to notice about this is a lot of the burden of adjusting to a crisis was on the country with the, with the crisis itself. That was generally considered to be fair, but it always uh, 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 led to some resentment within the countries that were having to make those painful adjustments, which often uh, led to recession in those countries. But the big point uh, of this is that essentially the problem was mitigated by simply limiting the amount of globalization. That then changes um, well, two things happen. One is the Bretton Woods system really breaks down in 1971 for reasons that are covered in the textbook. The United States didn't want to bear the cost of it anymore. Um, and then in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s, uh, the countries of the world decided that they are going to um, let exchange rates float, meaning no fixed exchange rates, and that they're going to lift limits on capital because they want the advantages of money being able to move around the world. So... The limits on financial flows are lifted, exchange rates floated. The good news is there's lots more possibility for international investment and to get the benefits of globalization. The bad news is there's now greater scope for crisis. And that was really dealt with through a, a combination of, of, of one country and two institutions. The country was the United States, which always in one way or another, when there was a crisis, uh, made it its business to try to resolve the crisis before things got too bad. Um, and, and some crises were resolved more quickly than others, um, but in the end, it was always the United States, uh, in one way or another, leading the program uh, uh, to deal with the situation. One of the ways it did that was through the G7, right? The group of seven, which were uh, basically the, the seven largest market-oriented economies in the world. Let's see if I can rattle them off from memory. The United States, uh, Great Britain, Germany, France, Japan, Canada, and Italy, if I have it right. Um, but most of the big uh, market economies in the world. Um, so the United States, working with those partners, with whom it had a lot of influence, could generally bring them along, although there was a lot of bargaining. But once the U.S. and those six partners agreed on things, you now had a big chunk of the world economy, right? And so they could do a lot, they had a lot of money, and their unity could, could get others to go along as well. When they agreed on solutions, they used the IMF to implement the solutions. The IMF was really a tool, not a decision maker. Um, so each of the resolutions of these crises was an ad hoc resolution, that is to say, tailored to the specifics of that crisis, led by the United States and the G7, and then implemented by the IMF. The recipe was a fairly familiar one, right? We're going to give you aid to, to, to stop the crisis in the short term, but we're going to require that in return you reform your economy. And again, there was often um, a sense among the recipients of aid that sometimes the medicine might have been uh, uh, worth, worth uh, the, the medicine might have been so bad that they weren't sure they really wanted it. Um, the IMF was often blamed for austerity in a lot of in, 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 uh, countries around the world that was needed in order to get this aid. And, and that uh, austerity, meaning cutting government spending, was seen as pushing people into poverty and sometimes even destabilizing governments. So there was a lot of controversy, and a lot was blamed uh, on the IMF, but ultimately the IMF was, was sort of just doing what 
the countries that control the IMF uh, told it to. I've kind of glossed over uh, a lot, but, but just to get to the key question, um, the United States hegemony has been gradually declining really since the end of World War II when it was at its peak. It's been the United States' share of global gross domestic product or the United States' share of the global economy has been steadily declining since it peaked at the end of, of World War II. More recently, the United States' prestige has decreased for uh, a variety of reasons, so people might be less desiring or less uh, uh, willing to follow the lead of the U.S. And the United States itself uh, appears to have a decreased appetite to lead and certainly a decreased appetite to spend money. Uh, that was especially visible during the administration of Donald Trump, uh, but but he, in some respects, was representative of a of a broader uh, set of uh, shift in opinion among the American voters. So the question is, um, will these ad hoc methods that have worked in the past work in the future? Will that when the next crisis comes around, will the countries of the world be able to? again, sort of spontaneously on the fly, agree on a solution, uh, get enough money together to make it work, and implement.